Hey y'all, welcome to Friday's Kitchen. Welcome back if you've been here before. In today's video, we are making a sweet potato souffle pound cake. Yes, y'all, this cake is so, so good. We have marshmallows, we have sweet potatoes, we have glazed pecans, we have a brown sugar glaze. If you are interested in seeing how I made it, stay tuned. Also, while you're here, I ask that you please take a moment, look down below, press that red subscribe button, join our family, and come back for some more recipes. All right, y'all, here we have all of our ingredients for the cake. Up first, we have three cups of cake flour, one half teaspoon of baking powder, one fourth teaspoon of sea salt, one teaspoon of ground cinnamon, one half teaspoon of ground nutmeg, and one half teaspoon of ground ginger. Here we have one and a half cups of granulated sugar, one and a half cups of brown sugar mixed together, six eggs at room temperature, two sticks of unsalted butter at room temperature. Here we have one cup of mashed sweet potato. These were fresh sweet potatoes that I actually baked in the oven myself. We have one cup of buttermilk at room temperature, and then we have one cup of small marshmallows. To this, we will also be adding a tablespoon of vanilla extract. We are gonna start by preheating the oven to 325 degrees. We are going to start by adding the two sticks of butter to the mixer. My mixer is a little loud, so at this point I will go into voiceover mode. Once we've added the butter to the mixer, we're going to turn the mixer on just to break that down a bit. It won't take long at all, and so we will quickly move on to adding the three cups of sugar, which is the one and a half cups of brown sugar, one and a half cups of granulated sugar. Once I've added the sugar to the butter, I typically let the mixer run for about 10 minutes. So I speed it up for the sake of time in the video. But just know that once you add your sugar to your butter, just let the mixer run for about 10 minutes, long enough to break down those sugar crystals. After the mixer has run for about five minutes, I typically stop it, scrape down the sides and the bottom of the bowl, and then let the mixer run for another five minutes. Now that the butter and sugar are well combined, we are now going to begin to add our eggs one at a time. Once I add an egg, I let the mixer run long enough to break the yolk and wait for the egg to start to incorporate with the rest of the mixture a bit. Now that we've added all the eggs to the mixture, I'm going to turn the mixer off and scrape down the bottom and the sides of the bowl once again. We just want to make sure that throughout the process, we get everything well combined. Now that we've turned the mixer back on, we're now going to add the one tablespoon of vanilla extract. Now that the vanilla extract has been added, I've turned the mixer off and I'm now going in and adding the sweet potato puree to the mix. So we're gonna mix this until it is well combined and then we will move on to adding the final ingredients to the bowl. All right, so now we are moving on to adding the flour mixture and the buttermilk to the bowl. So whenever you're adding milk to a cake, just remember to always start with your dry ingredients first and end with your dry ingredients. So what we're gonna do here is add about a third of the flour mixture to the bowl. We're gonna mix that up well, and then we'll add half of the milk. Once we've blended the milk in, we're gonna add another third of the flour mixture, then the rest of the milk, and then we'll finish with the rest of the flour mixture. So dry, wet, dry, wet, dry.
So now that we've added all of the flour and the mix to the bowl, we're gonna turn the mixer off and scrape down the sides and the bottom of the bowl one final time. Here we're turning the mixer on for one final mix. Once we're done with this, I'm going to remove the bowl from the stand mixer and then I'll come back and show you guys as I fold the mini marshmallows into the batter. All right, y'all, so here is our cake batter and we are just going to fold in the marshmallows. All right, so let me get the pan and we'll be right back. So this is the pan that we'll be using. I'm gonna start by spraying with some pan baking spray. Now I will be lining this pan with parchment paper, primarily because of the marshmallows. If you know, then you know how sticky marshmallows can be when they melt. And I do not want my cake getting stuck in the pan because of marshmallows. So. so now our pan is lined. I'm gonna go in and spray a little more pan. Probably overkill, but guess what? <laughs> when you put so much time and energy into a cake, the last thing you want is it to turn out messed up because it's stuck to the pan. All right, so now we're gonna go in and add our cake batter. those little bits of sweet potato. This is gonna be good. Oh, that cinnamon smells so good. Yeah, I'm so ready for fall cooler temps. Oh my gosh, I hate the heat. I'm in South Carolina, so there's no avoiding it unless I leave. But yeah, I'm so ready for cooler temps and all the fun that comes along with it. So we are going to place the cake into a 325 degree oven and we are going to start by baking for about one hour and 15 minutes. While our cake is in the oven, we're gonna go ahead and get started on the brown sugar glaze. So this is really simple. Just a quick note, all the ingredients for the cake and everything used in the making of the cake will be down below in the description box. But for this glaze, we have one half stick of unsalted butter and we're gonna melt it in this pan. And then to that, we're gonna add one cup of brown sugar, one half cup of heavy cream and one teaspoon of vanilla extract, but you'll see that coming up shortly. Now that the butter has melted, we're gonna go in and add the one cup of brown sugar. Then we're gonna give that a little mix. So here I'm going in and I'm adding the one half cup of heavy cream with the one teaspoon of vanilla extract and we're just going to give that a mix. Mm -hmm. 
So now we're gonna leave the pot um, on the stove and just kind of let it do its thing. It will begin to boil shortly. I will come in and stir periodically, but we do want it to get up to like a rumbling boil before we stop. Basically what we wanna do is give the sugar crystals a chance to dissolve so that our glaze isn't grainy. So you can just kind of press down um, on the inside of the pan with the spatula and you'll be able to tell whether or not you still have actual granules of sugar left. So once that the mixture is nice and smooth, we'll simply remove it from the heat and let it cool. All right, guys, this is our cake right out of the oven. Oh my gosh. <laughs> you can see those shiny pieces on top. Those are the melted marshmallows. You can see the bits of the sweet potato. It smells so good. So we are gonna let this sit in the pan for 10 to 15 minutes, and then we will turn it out onto a plate. I'm still trying to decide if I wanna leave it upright like this or flip it over. But yeah, we'll decide that when we come back. <laughs> I'll see you guys soon. All right, guys, so in addition to the ingredients for the brown sugar glaze, which is one half stick of unsalted butter, one cup of brown sugar, one half cup of heavy cream and one teaspoon of vanilla extract. To decorate our cake, we will also need some marshmallow cream, marshmallow fluff, as well as some glazed pecans. Now you can glaze, make your own glazed pecans if you want from scratch. Um, I decided to take the easy route today, so I will be using these packaged. They are absolutely delicious. So we will be back in just a few to finish assembling our cake. All right, y'all, so it has been about 10 minutes. So I'm going to remove the cake from the pan. I have decided to leave the cake upright. I think that this texture will make it prettier. So I'm just gonna simply start by removing this middle piece from the pan because my pan does separate. Take our parchment paper out. All right, so we're gonna flip the cake twice. I'm gonna flip it onto a plate first and then I'm gonna flip it back over onto the cake board upright the way that I want it. Sorry if you didn't see a lot of that. <laughs> so I'm gonna take the marshmallow fluff and I am just gonna spread it on top of the cake while the cake is still warm because while this is soft, I kind of want it to melt onto the cake a bit. So, we are just going to put some on the cake like so. So as the fluff starts to melt, and you can already look at it and see, maybe you can't, but I can see it getting shinier. And that means it's warming, and so it's starting to soften. And as it does that, I will go through and help it along, kind of spread it out the way I want it spread out. But for now, we're just gonna leave it, let it soften some more, and then we'll come back. All right, y'all, so as you can see, the marshmallow fluff is starting to slide down the sides of the cake. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. So I'm gonna go in and just kind of level it out a bit, just so some of that will run into the inside of the cake as well. As you can see here, I'm also going in and adding a little more marshmallow fluff to different areas of the cake. All right, so again, we're gonna leave it for a few and we'll be back. All right, y'all, we are back. And as you can see, our marshmallow fluff has started to melt all around the sides of the cake. At this point, we are going to go in and sprinkle our candied pecans on top. And it will just easily stick to the marshmallow. So now, the finishing touch will be to drizzle some of our brown sugar glaze on top. 
and drizzle on top. <laughs> Since the cake is still warm, the marshmallow and the brown sugar glaze is all just gonna kind of melt in together. Let me bring you guys in for a closer shot. All right, guys, here we have our finished product, our sweet potato souffle pound cake. Look at that. Look at the marshmallow, the brown sugar glaze, which is really pretty much a caramel, the glazed pecans, man. All right, we're gonna let this sit out for just a few and then we'll cut a slice so you guys can see the inside. I thank you guys so much for watching today's video. If you have any questions about anything I've done, leave them down below in the comment section and I will be sure to reply. I hope you guys have enjoyed. Again, while you're here, I ask that you please take a moment, look down below, press that red subscribe button, join our family, come back for some more recipes. Again, I thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next video.